All right. All right, looks like we're back. Um, Mama Calloway, I'm, uh, we have four minutes left by my calendar. I think I'm going to have to stop soon, but um, I, I don't think we'll get to all your questions. But um, let me look at Mike's question here. Mike Musseri, um forms any different than rearranging matter into discrete forms? Why assign property rights to the latter and not to the former? Well, because uh, information is the purpose of property rights. Uh, is to permit people to use just resources productively in human action without conflict or fighting over them. The nature of our world is that there are some things that cannot be used by more than one person at a time. And unless we want people to fight over them all the time, the only way to use them productively is to have rules about who can use them. That's what property rules are. So the reason property rules is because of the fundamental fact of scarcity in the universe. Uh, for things like information, information is not a means of action like scarce resources are. Um, they are information that informs our actions and helps us choose what to do. They are guides to action. As a simple example, I think I might have one minute to go into this. Um, if you wanted to make a cake and you had a recipe for a certain type of cake, you would need your own mixed uh, eggs, spoon, body, etc., and no one else could use those things at the same time, but a type of cake at the same time if they had their own scarce resources, if property rights allowed that to happen. But they all use the same recipe or information at the same time. So that's why we don't need scarce uh, property rights and scarce resources. Not only do we not need them, but the only way to assign property rights and scarce and, and sorry, non-scarce resources like information, think about it. When you assign a property right, it means it's enforceable. Well, force is a physical thing in the real world, and force and enforceable rights are always enforced against physical things. Setting my recipe right, I don't really want the recipe. I don't want to just chastise you and say, bad, bo bad boy. I have a court order of physical force telling you you can't use your own mixing bowl and eggs to make this cake. You can't sell this cake to those people. So I, it always comes down to ownership of rights in scarce things. So you can't avoid this. So the question is who owns it? And the libertarian answer is first user owns it, and that's it. Not someone else who comes up with a way to, to use it. You know, if, if you come up with a way to use your own property, that doesn't mean you have the right to tell me not to use my own property in the same way. I think we're out of time. Uh, I'm happy to go further, but I think the schedule has someone else coming next. Gene, if you want to uh, contradict me on that, I will go on further, but I believe I'm out of time. And I've enjoyed it. Good questions. We had a large crowd at one point. We have 44 people right now. Um, a webinar this afternoon. I'll put it here again. I'm discussing Obama's patent reform on the Mises Academy. And I'll go in detail into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Or as I call it, the good, the meh, and the ugly. All right, I'm going to sign out. Thanks, everyone.